from Holy Ghost anyway. Um, get your Bibles out or your smart devices, whatever you're going to use this morning as the offering. Baskets pass by, your gifts in there. I'm going to try this um, little microphone. If it doesn't work, I'll go to the handheld, so have it ready. We've been on a journey, and uh, if you'll remember, go back to the 1st of July, we started off by looking at getting through what you're going through. A lot of people uh, are going through different situations and storms and battles and trials, uh, just life. They're, they're going through life, and so how do we get through those things that pop up in our lives uh, that we're going through? One of the things that my sister and I have been talking about and others have encouraged us with is uh, we don't have to get over the passing of our mother. We just need to get through it. Uh, and same thing with you. If any loss, uh, you know, I talked to one of our uh, sisters this morning here at Grace Life and she was telling me about a loss in their family this week, not particularly a death, but they still need faith and encouragement and confidence to get through what they're going through on this stage of their journey. Uh, then we talked about the finding wholeness. We talked about the journey of um, the, the crippled man with his four friends bringing him to Jesus, and Jesus dealt with his, the son in him before he dealt with the sin in him. He spoke to his identity over his iniquity. That's good. Uh, then we talked about traveling light casting our burdens and our cares. It's one thing to go through life. It's another thing to go through life weighted down, burdened, carrying things that you were never meant to carry. Most of those things are things that we picked up ourselves. God didn't give them to us. Doesn't want the hurts, rejections, bitterness, and we've got this big backpack full of stuff, our burdens, and we were never meant to carry. He says, cast all your care on him. Because his yoke is easy. Yoking up with Jesus makes the difference on this journey. And then th today we're going to talk about the middle miles. Uh, the middle miles on of our journey is, to me, it's symbolic of the dark days, the trying times, the times of opposition, the times where there's a mountain in front of you that you may not seem like you can climb. There are storms raging all around you. There's trials. There are battles on the road of life. Someone here said to me recently, why are you sharing with us on things like getting through tough times and going through battles and storms? I said, because life is full of either coming out of a battle or going into a battle or being in the middle of a battle or storm. Uh, there are clear days. There are days more so now through freedom that I've received in the grace of God than ever before where most days are thrills, romance, and adventures, but there are days that have trials, spills, and falls. Uh, so what do we do when we face those times? How do we get through those times? Well, you know, knowing now that we can cast our cares on Him, and you get to that point. See, we started our journey by faith. Would you agree? It is by grace, through faith, that we started walking with the Lord. <laughs> So we yoked up with him when we believed. Okay? And now we are joint heirs together. The good thing about yoking up with Jesus is he's out in front of us. He's, he's already been where we are going, and he has, take, he has taken care of everything. So like Lisa said, instead of frustrated planning, we can rest in the plan that he has for us. Um, but... How do we get through these dark days? How do we, when we face, the, we look back and we say we started the journey on faith and we look ahead knowing that he's in our future, but what do I do right now in those mental mouths? Let me tell you something, believer. You've come too far to go back now. You're past the point of no return. Keep moving forward. But what do I do now that I've come too far? But I, you, you, listen, you have arrived. Listen to me very carefully here. If you make the kingdom of God and the finality of serving God a destination three miles south of or north of Mars or wherever you want to call it out in the wild blue yonder, and that's all that it is, you will struggle in the here and now. But I believe that 
To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I do believe that the veil is very thin between here and there. I believe that it's closer than we can even imagine. It's one breath away. And Lisa has encouraged me many times that my mom's not dead. She received eternal life. She's just living on the other side of the veil right now. All of your loved ones that have gone before, they're just, they're very close. I believe that they're so close that I can talk to my mom. Oh, be careful, that's talking to the dead. She's not dead, she's alive. I'm not talking to the dead, I'm talking to a living spirit. I, encouraging myself in the Lord right now so in those middle miles what do we do go to 2nd Corinthians the fifth chapter 2nd Corinthians 5 7 I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible and I'm, this morning I'm using a portion of this scripture and I believe it's contextually correct I don't have to share it all with you you can go back and look at it for we walk say we walk, we walk. by faith so this journey that we, were on, that we are on started by faith and it is continuing in faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. The Amplified says, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. We have faith that in the middle mouths we can hold on to the promises that God has given us even though they may not have manifested themselves yet in our lives we hold on by faith we're not walking by sight see sight says if I don't see it I, I can't believe it but faith says I believe it even though I can't see it and so by faith I'm holding on to the promises of God his promise is that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that's something that I can hold on to even when I don't feel like it. Even if my behavior hasn't matched up with it. Even if my vocabulary hasn't changed yet. You are, if you have believed, and when I say believe this morning, I'm not talking about a mental assent that you acknowledge. I'm talking about by faith you've believed. Excuse me. That was getting in my way. Now, we've talked about casting our burdens off, casting our cares off. That literally means to throw them off. But in casting our cares on Him, we don't cast off our declaration. Our declaration in the darkness is still life and light. My confident assurance is that He is the light of the world even when I'm not in a dark situation. So my declaration is not being cast off when I cast off my cares, when I cast off my burdens, when I cast all, everything that I'm going through at His feet. My declaration is still the same. We do not cast off our confessions. That's, that's good. Hebrews, I believe it's chapter 10, verse 23 says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. Don't let go of your confession when you're letting go of your situation. We can let go of our situation. What do you mean? And I've said it quite a bit, but repetition is good and so that we can get a hold of it and we can understand that our confession is the same. Regardless of how we're feeling in our body physically, our confession is by His stripes we're healed. It doesn't matter that signs and symptoms are here one day and gone the next. The, the, the situation may change, but the, the confession remains the same. That's how you get through those middle miles when the pressure's on. See, Paul gave us uh, several examples in the Scripture of um, a marathon, a race. Now, you can look at my physique and tell that I'm not a runner. Uh, I'm going to this. What what? Yep, it's coming. What I mean by that is, I'm not a marathon runner by nature. Now, give me a ball behind the running back, and I'll run over ten or twelve people to get to the end zone. I can do that, but a marathon, I'm not. I'm not designed for that. Five K, it was good, but see, in marathon running, the middle miles are the most difficult miles. 
It's the miles that are behind you that you've accomplished already and you feel good about but it's the miles ahead of you that you begin to worry about and you become frustrated about, and so you get wore out in the middle trying to get to the finish. But if I can reassure you this morning to give you uh, security in your afterlife, uh, I'm amazed that by how many people continue to struggle with the verbiage that I use that your afterlife is secure once you believe. Um, either the promises of God are true or they're not. You don't receive eternal life when you die. You received eternal life the moment that you believed. And so you have to understand a lot of times in Scripture when Paul especially gives certain lists of things, make sure that you read the context of this. He would say things like, these won't inherit the kingdom. And you don't get an inheritance when you die. You get an inheritance when somebody else died. So I'm, my inheritance is for the here and now, not in the afterlife. The afterlife is the reward to, to be in His presence forever with all of the saints. That is secure the moment that you believe. And what people are having insecurity is in and become frustrated in and don't live the abundant life in the middle miles of their journey with the Lord is because they are trying to reach a destination that has already been secured for them. I love the song, I want to see heaven, kingdom come. I can tell you that the kingdom has been coming for 2019 years. Ever since he ascended and he sent the Holy Spirit and popped the cork and the Holy Spirit has been poured out, the kingdom has been coming. Why? Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy located in the Holy Ghost. Is that what the Scripture says in Romans? And so we're living under an open heaven where the kingdom of God is flowing. It's manifesting in our lives, and so we can enjoy the abundant life here and now with the kingdom of God in operation. Nighttime still comes. As believers, you still have nighttime on your journey with Jesus. It's amazing when our children were growing up that if they got sick, it seemed to be amplified a hundred times if it was at night. You know, they could have a fever and a temperature. They could be vomiting and have all types of different problems during the day and you know it was tough but it amplified itself at night you're tired you've been dealing with di different things your your mental state and emotional things just seem to get a lot more complicated do you know that there are more emergencies in the ER at a full moon at night I mean you can look at the statistics there's more emergencies people coming in so loneliness compounds at night. And I've been talking to my dad in 51 years with my mom that they were together the last seven years as he's retired completely together 24-7 all the time. And so at night, the loneliness intensifies. The lights are turned off. Nobody's there. Your mind is going. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Do you, have you ever experienced these things? These are the middle miles so we don't we cast off our cares but we don't cast off our confidence we are still confident that the same god who began helped us begin this journey is the same god who's with us in the middle of the journey he says in hebrews 10:35 therefore we do not cast away our confidence how many have we seen down through the years that cast off their confidence my confidence isn't in myself. My confidence is in Him. Because even when I am faithless, He is faithful. He's never failed us. He's not going to ever fail us. You can count on our confidence is in Him. So we can't cast off. When we cast off our cares, we're not casting off our, conf our confidence and we're not casting off our confessions. We're casting off the situation. We're getting away from that. Don't look back. Uh, don't turn back. Keep moving forward in faith. 
Let me give you an Old Testament example of moving as the Holy Spirit moves. The Ark of the Covenant was a type and shadow of the presence of God. So wherever the Ark of the Covenant was, that was where the presence of God was. Uh, so much so that Obed-Edom, when he took the, uh, the Ark into his home for protection, his whole house was blessed. Why? Because the presence of the Lord was there. It was a type and shadow. And Moses led them forth out of Egypt by a rod, but Joshua is going to lead them across the Jordan, symbolic of coming, coming into the new covenant by a mercy seat. Did you hear me? Moses led them forth with a rod. He lifted up the rod and the waters were split and they crossed the Jordan, coming out of sin, type and shadow of baptism. But when Joshua takes the lead and he's going to lead them from one land to another land, one covenant to another covenant, he leads them by the mercy seat. What do you mean? He tells, the Holy Spirit tells Joshua to tell the people that as the priests step into the water of the Jordan River with the ark, when they see the ark move, you move. When you see the presence of God move, when you hear the Holy Spirit move, when you hear His voice moving, listen, He is never retreating. He's always moving forward. Hebrews 10.39 says, But our way is not that of those who shrink back or turn back, but we are of those who believe. Say, we are of those who believe. We're not turning back. We're moving forward. In the middle miles, you can't turn back. I want to put you this in your mind. I'm put it on the screen. I want you to look at this. Excuses will evaporate your energy, and your enjoyment in your walk. All that excuses do begin to suck the life out of your walk. The enjoyment goes. Then when the enjoyment goes, when the joy goes of walking in this journey because of trials, battles, situations, then your energy goes. And then that's why people quit. They quit because they've stopped enjoying the journey. They've stopped. Their energy is depleted because they've spent more time frustrated plant, with frustrated planning, worrying, than they have worshiping and just giving it to the Lord. Uh, Lisa has given. I'm, I know I'm using a lot of her stuff this morning because we talk all the time. But, you know, even in the garden there was a snake. God didn't remove the snake. And he's not going to remove the snake in your garden, but he's given you victory over the snake in the garden. You've got power and authority to speak over those snakes in your garden. So we don't turn back just because there's a snake in our garden. But what produces snakes? Complaining. If you complain, that snake will manifest itself. But if you've got praise and thanksgiving on your lips, you won't have to worry about that snake. So if you, if you, it had happened in the Old Testament, it's a type and shadow. When they complained in the wilderness, it produced snakes. And so your garden is not free of snakes, but the, you'll never see them and you'll never have to deal with them until you start complaining. And when you're complaining, they'll manifest. So don't give any excuses. We're not of those who turn back. We are those who are looking forward. Um. The journey is comprised of two, two things. I want you to look at Our journey includes both the way of grace and the walk of faith. If you're taking any notes this morning, write those two components down in your journey. It's the way of grace and it's the walk of faith. Now let me tell you the difference in the two. First of all, the way of grace is everything that God has done for us through Jesus. Those things that you cannot change. The grace of God is unchangeable. You cannot reverse what Jesus did at the cross. It's the way of grace. You don't get to the Father except you come through Jesus and His blood and what He did at the cross. It's a finished work and you can't undo what he's already done so the way of grace is what God did for you 
through Jesus and it includes every benefit. It includes that all of your sins were forgiven. Every one of them, past, present, and future, it includes that all of your diseases have been healed. Every one of them. That's the way of grace. It's undeserved. It's unmerited. You can't earn it. You can't pay for it. You can't buy it. Okay? But there's also the walk of faith. You don't access the way of grace until you start the walk by faith. Okay? So once you, by faith, begin the walk, you're walking in the way of grace. How do you walk in that grace? You do it through faith. Grace flows through the pipeline of faith. His grace is, does, does not ever stop flowing from heaven. His grace and mercy is continually flowing. But the pipeline, faith, from which you are receiving that grace can get broader and broader and bigger and bigger by believing. As your faith, as you acknowledge this walk of faith, and, and let me add this, the way of grace is unearned, but the walk of faith takes effort. That, write that one down. The way of grace is unearned. You don't earn His grace, but the walk of faith takes effort. I remember our, my dad's spiritual mentor, I've always called him my spiritual grandfather, Brother Helm, he said, faith, you're just walking just you're one foot in front of the other. By faith, you're walking. And the Holy Spirit leads, guides, and directs in all of that. But it does take effort. The misnomer that a lot in that uh, particular ministry uh, erred in is they sat back and they did nothing and they waited oh we're just waiting on God no it's a walk of faith you get up and you do things you do them by faith faith takes a risk there's effort in that okay Romans 1 17 we live those of us the just the born again the believers, we live by faith. So I'm encouraging this morning in the mental mouse, keep moving forward in faith. Faith got us started. Faith will keep us going. Keep on believing as you walk with Jesus. I was reminded when I wrote that note down, keep on believing as you walk with Jesus. The story of Jairus came to my mind. See, because Jairus came to Jesus, told him that his daughter was sick, and he had enough faith to come to Jesus knowing that Jesus could do something about his sick daughter. And that's where we need to get people. We need to get people to Jesus and the, the, to, to the point that they believe by faith that he can do what needs to be done in their life and nobody else can. Okay, And like we said two weeks ago, uh, a lot of people's methods and motives are incorrect, but as long as they get them to Jesus, they've done what they needed to do. Even the, the Pharisees got the woman caught in adultery to the right place. Their motives weren't right, but they got her to the feet of Jesus. And look what he did. Amen? So by faith, we're beginning this walk with Jesus. But, and as we walk with Jesus, we believe that on our journey that he's going to, he has the power to take care of every situation that we have in our life. But then you'll get a report from someone else that says that that situation is hopeless. See, because they came to Jairus on his journey with Jesus to take care of his daughter, and they said, your daughter is dead. It's hopeless. But on the journey... His confession had to be the same in the middle of the journey as it was at the beginning of the journey. And what was his confession? I believe that you're able to heal my daughter. So even if your situation seems hopeless and you've gotten a report that it, there's no hope in this place, that in this thing that it's going on, it's dead, you have to confess the same thing that you confessed at the beginning of the journey. My God is able to do more than I could even think or imagine. So if he can raise Lazarus from the dead, he can raise my daughter from the dead. He can speak. See, I said, 
we continue to speak life and light in the dark situations. So on the journey the, towards the dead thing, God's going to help you to speak life. Your confession remains the same. I see that hand back there, brother. You confessed it. Tim's alive today by faith in what Jesus can do and did for him. Hey. So he kept speaking. Jesus said, only believe. I'm sorry, babe. He didn't ask him what he didn't believe. He said, only believe. It takes more effort to go back than it does to continue moving forward. In this walk of faith, because grace is free, it's unearned, but the walk of faith takes effort. But it takes more effort as you look back to where God's brought you from to turn around and go back to that than it does to just keep moving forward and resting in what He's got for you as you hold on to the promises of God. Like I said a few minutes ago, the Holy Spirit is always advancing. He's never retreating. So if the Holy Spirit is never retreating, He will never call us to go back to what He's brought us out of. The battle cry is always forward. Travel towards, this is good instruction, travel towards the voice of, of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He's always going to be out ahead of you, leading you and guiding you. He's always drawing you forward. He's never pushing you or pulling you backward. And He's not behind you, driving you. The law drives, but the Holy Spirit leads. There's a difference. If you will study shepherds, they weren't behind the sheep driving the sheep. You drive cattle, you lead sheep. Journey, the Holy Spirit will cause us to advance. Journey through all of life's oppositions. That's why we talked about getting through what you're going through, not getting over it. Ride out the emotional roller coaster. Just ride it out. See, the walk of this is a walk of faith because it's not by feeling. We don't go by the five senses. Now, in the walk of faith, will God eventually touch our five senses? Absolutely. But we don't let those five senses lead and guide us. The tangible was the substance of the old covenant. Uh, lambs bleeding incense burning the shoe bread brazen laver you, all the articles of the te the temple they were tangible touchable so it took n it took no faith to believe in that it took no right you could see it it took no, no faith to follow the 10 commandments the <laughs> sonia was sharing with me that she encountered someone that said that I don't believe in the law, that I don't believe in the commandments. Okay? Listen very, very carefully. I am not against the law, but it wasn't for me. It never was for me. Okay? Um, because the law has never set anyone free, and it's never made anyone righteous. Only Jesus has. And so, this is a little ice that I'm walking on here but it's truth the Ten Commandments is not my moral code the Holy Spirit is my he is, he's my moral code and if I will be sensitive to his leading and his voice out in front of me leading me he will never lead me where I'm going against what he morally wants me to do and ethically needs me to do. The problem is when we don't listen to, we don't yield to, and we don't submit to the voice of the Spirit, and we go our own way. And when we go our own way, that's when we put the backpack back on and we're in the middle mound. We don't see light in the darkness. We don't speak life over dead things. And it becomes very difficult. But we've got to go by, by faith. Walking by our senses is depending upon our human resources and our human wisdom, our ingenuity, and our own calculations. And when the blind lead the blind, they both end up in the ditch. But our walk by faith says His grace is sufficient. 
His resources are unlimited. His wisdom is infinite. His power enables us, and His direction is impeccable. Okay, I'm getting ready to bring it. In our middle miles, when the night seems to never end and the mountain seems too hard to climb, God is not on trial in your trials. God's not on trial. His faithfulness is not on trial. His goodness is not on trial in the middle of our trials. So what do we do? Lean in to His faith. <laughs> Lean in to His obedience. Pray and believe God for renewed strength in the middle mile. As you lean into his strength, as you lean into his faithfulness, pray and believe God for renewed strength and trust in the promises that he who spoke those promises is faithful to bring them to pass in your life. Hebrews 11 is what uh, I've always heard as the hall of the heroes of faith. It's the hall of the faithful. It's a record of their acts of faith. And so go home and read Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I encourage you to read it from the Passion Translation. You can find it on a Bible app. But this is what I glean from that, and I want to close with this morning as I wrap this thing up. At, in the middle miles, it's a walk of faith. Faith is a motivator. It motivates us to move towards what God has spoken to us. Do you remember in Genesis, the 12th chapter, when God spoke to Abram? And he said, leave where you are, the Ur of the Chaldeans, and go to a land I will show you. Okay? It took faith for Abram to move towards the voice of God. Listen, to get from where you are in the middle miles to where you need to be, it's going to take faith but you will have to leave where you are to continue the journey. Okay? Uh, I'm not talking about physical locations. Some people hear those words and they think, well, if I get to this place, that's where God's moving, or if I get over here, that's where God's going to bless me. No. It's just following the leading of God's voice by faith. It's a motivator. It motivates us to believe for miracles. Sarah tapped into and embraced the one who made the promise. What are you talking about? She was barren. You know the story. God promised a child. She had to embrace and tap into believing that what God said was going to happen, even in her old age, was going to happen. Faith is a multiplier. He said, God told Abram, he said, I'm going to multiply your seed. If God speaks a word to you from an individual as prophecy to your own spirit through a sermon, through a song, and Holy Spirit speaks to you, what he gave you was a seed. Go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. The seed is the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. He gives you a, a word that's a part of who he is that he sows into you. As he sows that word into you, it's going to multiply. Because everything that you need, God has already given to you in the seed of his word, Jesus Christ. And it's been planted in the fertile soil of your life. It's going to multiply. Listen, if their hearts could were still remembering the Ur of the Chaldeans, where they came from, what they left behind, they would have found an opportunity to go back. What do you mean? If we focus on our past, if we focus on where we've come from, instead of looking forward and believing in faith, you will find an opportunity to go back to what you came from. But they couldn't turn back. Their hearts were fixed. Their minds were made up. Faith is a promoter. It will prompt you. Faith makes the realm of the kingdom to be activated in the earth. Would you guys just begin to play a little bit? Faith opens up the way where there seems to be no way. Happened for Rahab. I'm, I'm going through Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Faith removes obstacles. The walls of Jericho fail. 
Faith will enable us to endure great atrocities. Faith sparks courage. Faith will allow you to see your children come to life again. As you stand to your feet, I'm going to give you two last things here that will be on the screen as you stand. Look, Looking back, you see how far God has brought you, and you're grateful. So the only thing that we should do in looking back is to be grateful for what God has brought us through and from. Amen? The victories that He has won the mountains that He's helped us to cross, the valleys that He's brought us through. It's only by His grace. We look forward and we see our need to grow. We can only grow by His grace. Paul, Peter said that I may grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as I look forward, I know that there's things that I need to grow in, but it's only going to happen by His grace. So where I'm at in the middle miles, where am I at? Right here, right now, in the middle mile, His grace is sufficient. We look back and it's by His grace and we're grateful for where we've come from. We look forward, we know we need to grow, but it's only going to be His grace. So what do I do? I, I continue to move forward knowing that His grace is sufficient right here, right now. The way of grace and the walk of faith. And we had a powerful time last Sunday morning. I've seen God doing things through this week as individuals have talked to us and the, the testimonies that have been coming from not just that service, but people's minds changing about who God is, what He's got in store for them. Chris had an awesome testimony last Sunday morning about what God's brought him through, depression and suicidal thoughts and tendencies and God's delivering him in that we've had testimonies through emails this week that are coming in but some of you may say but I haven't received mine do you know how you receive it by faith it's yours by faith it's going to manifest itself in your life don't quit don't look back and complain, look back and be grateful for how far you've come. If it had not been for the grace of God, where would I be? But He's not finished and I've got to grow, so His grace is sufficient right here, right now. I'm going to pray. When I'm finished praying, the praise team is going to sing. Listen, we, I want to get away from certain verbiages that attach us to old covenant mindsets in the old covenant see the last altar was the cross the ultimate sacrifice once and for all he doesn't continually be crucified so the last altar was the cross the sacrificial lamb Jesus gave himself for us on the cross uh, this is more of a place of surrender than it is sacrifice. Uh, we're not laying anything on the altar um, to be crucified anymore. I was crucified with Christ, and now it's not I live, that, but he who lives through me and in me. But I would play, call this a place of surrender, a place that you can actually take a few steps by faith to believe, just as a symbol of faith, that I'm receiving what Holy Spirit has already poured out healing, deliverance, peace of mind, speaking life over your dead marriage, speaking life over your finances and your life, whatever area it is, coming to the front just as signifying by faith that I believe that the Lord is doing what He said that He was going to do. And He will do the same for you if you stay in your seat as He does if you would come to the front. But I believe it is an an act of faith that helps us and it gives us confidence and it boosts our drive to go forward, our effort in walking the walk of faith. So let's pray. They'll sing and you respond how Holy Spirit directs you. Thank you, Father, for helping us this morning. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. 
that you're moving amongst us and that you're doing only what you can do in the lives of these believers. Now, may they respond in faith and obedience to what you place on their hearts during these next moments. In Jesus' name.